Hi, everybody. Uh, just going to do a little interview with uh, one of our more famous uh, photographers uh, in Leica Academy, Jesse Marlowe, who's well known for his street photography work. And um, rather than me talk about his pictures, we can get him to talk about his pictures himself. So, uh, Jesse, welcome to our little interview session here. Thanks for having me, Nick. Pleasure. Pleasure. Um, <laughs> yes. So we, we just just tell us a little bit about your career. How, how did you get started in photography? And I, I know it's a long time ago, but still, just tell me some stories. Sure, sure. I, um, I first, you know, like a lot of people, I, I picked up a camera at an early age. I think it was the age of eight. I, um, eight? Gosh. Yeah, I was given a camera by my mum and I was given, actually given a book about the New York graffiti scene. And mm -hmm. the book was called Subway Art. And that, I suppose that book triggered something in me. And I, I then for the next, um, let's say probably 10 years on weekends and school holidays, with, armed with my mum's camera, would go around and, and photograph the graffiti walls around Melbourne. And mm -hmm. I suppose this is, yeah, my first taste of, of, uh, of being out on the street with a camera. Okay. And then yeah. I studied it at high school and then... Straight after high school, I went off and did a two-year TAFE course. And then it was there, it was while I was at the, at the, the TAFE course that I started, um, I suppose, making contacts in the industry and, and started getting a little bit of work. And then from there, I suppose things just snowballed and I've been working as a freelance photographer for the last 20 years. But also alongside that commercial practice, I've been um doing my own personal work which is i suppose for me the most important part of, of, of you know why i take pictures so you you do the work to support the art which is great absolutely yeah the old, okay uh, that old so what sort of what, what sort of commercial work do you do um i work commercial i've i've worked for newspapers a lot over the years so i worked a lot with the fairfax newspapers the mm -hmm. age the sydney morning mm -hmm. herald mm -hmm. and the australian financial review so i did that for a number of years and then i've also worked um you know, for different other editorial magazines and um, different, occasionally advertising jobs. It's just it's just a, a quite a varied kind of um, mm. freelance career, I suppose. Mm. I started off. I first started off shooting concerts. That was my um, my first sort of like commercial foot in the door, and that was for the mm. newspapers. And I did that, and then that led to other work with the papers, and then that leads to other things. And yeah. That's great. So you're a, a, a traditional freelance in the sense that you'll turn your camera on most things and can probably deal with most situations if you need to. Absolutely. That's really cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, let's have a little talk about your personal work and some of the street images which you're you're well known for. I'm just going to share some sc a screen here and bring up some images. So start with this one. So this image here uh, intrigues me. Is this one of your newspaper images or is this a street photograph? Well, it's, I suppose it's where I, I first started off, you know, no one sort of starts off, no one sets out to become a street photographer. It's one mm. of those things that can kind of happen naturally. But the thing that I, I struggled with early on was, was having the confidence when I was out on the street. So mm. I suppose where I, I, I suppose I, where I became co more confident was by going to protests. And I went to a lot of protests that were around Melbourne Okay. Um, back in the sort of late nineties. And this is a mm. photo from that period. So it was, it was mm. all about, you know, just getting in there with your camera and just making sure you got the shot. And yeah. I suppose that's, you know, translated into my, my, um, my street career as well. So, so it seems that yeah, you, this was a, this was a photo from the September 11, September 11, 2000, not September 11, 2001, but it was the world. Um, it was the, Oh, it was a big protest in Melbourne the world, at the World Trade Centre and there was lots of, yeah, really strong pr uh, police presence, as you mm, can see mm, in the pictures. So, yeah, it was a pretty, um, it was pretty heavy going at, at times, that protest from memory. So I, I recently found this picture. I was going through some negatives during, um, during lockdown and mm. I think like most photographers, you sort of, at the moment, you've been, a lot of photographers I know have been going back through their archives and finding mm. work that they'd forgotten about or pictures that just, you know, didn't make mm. the cut at the time. And this was, mm. I think, one of them from that period that, nice. you know, it was nice to rediscover and, and get the scanner yeah. going again and, and yeah. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a cracker. That's the old um, Robert Kappa approach. F no, wrong expression. I was going to say F8 and B there. That's somebody else. It's if yeah, your pictures yeah. aren't good enough, you're not close enough. Not that's close the enough, way, yeah. isn't it? It's definitely close enough. 
Yeah, it's pretty Fantastic. close. That that, that yeah. guy, the, the policeman in the middle, is he's not too happy with me, as you can see. No, was, no. Uh, that makes the picture though totally. It's that eye contact. Yeah, that eye contact makes the picture. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's great. I love the tones in it too. It's just all black. Yeah. Bill Green was talking about that last week. He loves to see images which rely on the dark areas and yeah. you know, there's sort of yeah. some mystery in there. It's very interesting. I've, yeah, I'm a bit the same. I like you yeah. know strong blacks in my. Um, yeah. Like well, a strong black point and a strong white point. Strong right? everything in your pictures. Yeah. I mean, some of the pictures you've got coming up are, are very contrasty and bold. So we'll talk yeah. about that in a sec. Yeah. So the next one we've got here, which is also black and white, but this one is, this seems to sort of fulfill one of your, um, uh, what's the word, your oeuvre sort of styles, if you like, which is that just total incongruity um, and also juxtaposition um, of, 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 of similar shapes um, yeah. that are unlikely. Um, is that a fair comment about your work? Would you say? Yeah, I think definitely. I think that's one of the the um, I suppose a bit of a, th a theme that comes through in a lot of street photographers' work. You you often see things on the street. And you might wait for that that moment to mm, mm. where things might collide or even contradict them, like the background. But with this one, mm. this was um, this was two years into a project that I had shot about injured people, and I spent uh -huh. two years shooting. I actually hurt my arm myself and was unable to take pictures for a few weeks and that triggered this idea to, to go and shoot this series called Wounded. And mm -hmm. yeah, it was a two year obsession where basically all I did for that period photographically was look for injured people on the street. Wow. It was, um, yeah, it had its moments. It was, um, you know, I'd be <laughs> sort of walking along the street with a friend and I'd, you know, I'd spot someone a hundred meters away with a, with a, broken nose and I'd, I'd run off after them and I'd be trying to trying to turn that that injury into an interesting picture and this was this photo, this particular photo here was the last picture in the series and mm -hmm. the book was actually already um it was already being designed and mm -hmm. I um so I'd kind of mentally finished the project but I'd seen this mannequin and he'd, he'd fallen over and the, you know the owners of the restaurant had put the, the yeah. sling on him and I stopped the car one day and I, um, I just waited and took a few shots of the mannequin and then out of nowhere, which <laughs> you know, can often happen with this sort of work, a guy yeah. with a you know, matching sling walks past and then, then there's the picture. So yeah, no, yeah it's, it's, it's a classic. Wonderful. Absolutely. He, the guy doesn't look terribly happy and I'm sure that to, well, when we do uh, the webinar, we'll get some comments about um, you know, people's reactions to these things. Uh, yeah, but there's another shot coming up, which is uh, must be from the same series. I don't know if it's the next one or not. Let's just see. Yes, this must be from the same series. Is that right? Yeah, this was taken yeah. probably about, a, from memory, probably a week or two before that, that, that mm. previous image. So this was one mm. of the, the last uh, images from that series as well. Mm. And, you know, towards the end of that period, I, was, I had friends that were sort of um, spurring me on and sort of setting these <laughs> challenges. And some of them were, you know, now you've got to look for multiple injuries. And, <laughs> yes, and, yeah. um, and I think that just sort of was in the back of my mind. And I, I remember seeing this woman carrying the spine and followed her, just, you know, kept a nice distance and just took yeah. a few shots as she walked down Flinders Lane in Melbourne. And then, and then just by, you know, by chance, that's the, the luck that you sometimes get with this sort of work. It, the, the guy with the crutches just appeared. That's amazing. That's and amazing. Then the I mean, Love you could, couldn't plan that or set it up again so no. yeah well that's the whole point isn't it, it they, they are literally unique moments in time um yeah. and i think that's that's the, the strength of this sort of imagery all yeah, right I look, so i'm going to move on i'm going to move on a little bit because yeah, um, we're going to talk about this in the uh and the webinar as well so um now i just one thing i've got to ask about, about this one is um the on the on the the tram it says don't just tell them show them but that's the name of your book isn't it that's right. Yeah, I pinched the title for the exhibition from that that picture. I was. I see. I um I had a show coming up, and this picture was in that show. And I was searching for a title for the series, and I didn't want to call it, you know, new color work or eight mm. color photos. Mm. And mm. I just saw that, and I thought it kind of um I thought it really suited the the body of work. So that's where mm. I pinched it from. And oh, it's luckily, a great title. It's a luckily, great I haven't had Vodafone chase me up yet, but um <laughs> sure sure yeah. one day. Love it. All right, moving now. This this one I got to ask you, like, what 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 is going on here? I, mean, I, know. I know what's going on, but it's it's the the painting the road, but the the idea of the the, the Jewish guys in the background, and then there's one guy in the alleyway just picking something up. It's it's just most surreal. Yeah, I think this picture here for me, 
I suppose sums up my my working approach in one picture. It's it's a photo that I was driving along this this street in Melbourne one day, and that's actually my car in the the top right hand corner that's okay. illegally illegally parked in the handicap zone. Which <laughs> I um basically when you work for a newspaper and you're sent out to get a picture, you you have to get the picture. So mm-hmm. I kind of you know when I saw this moment. I basically just had to, you know, slam the brakes on, get the nearest parking spot, which was the handicap spot. And then I stood out on the road for, you know, four or five minutes shooting this scene as it just un- unfolded. But mm-hmm. it's that, that, you know, it's that moment where the guy in the laneway stops to pick up that, whatever it is he's picking up, mm-hmm. that it's, that's the picture. The other mm-hmm. picture is either side of that. Mm. It's just it's just two guys blow torching the keep clear sign mm. and the three boys in the background. I actually, the, the little detail that's a little bit hard to see is the guy on the, mm. on, in the phone box is laughing because I've got traffic that's sort of, you know, this swerving guy, yeah. and tooting me in the background, which you can't see. And he's yeah. he's watching this scene from a different angle and seeing me kind of <laughs> moving cars on just so I could get this picture. So, Brilliant. yeah. Okay. Uh, this is one of my favourites of yours. We've, we've used this a few times in our promotional work. And I presume this is, well, I, it's a hole in a in a hoarding, isn't it? Looking through the building side, but yeah, there's right. something incredibly well designed about this image. I love it. Yeah, I mean, for me, it was it was the colour that I was first drawn mm. to. And I, I was driving along the street, saw the colour, stopped the car, and then proceeded just to sort of see this little window into this building site, and then the worker there, and and then it's just a matter of just you know taking a handful of shots and and hoping that that something interesting happens so that there's another element. I really love pictures where there's a, you know, a strong graphic element like there is in this photo and interesting color, which there is. And then if there's that extra element with, you know, you know, someone doing something, uh, that's, that's when a picture comes together. So this, this mm-hmm. one is, is a picture I'm really proud of. Yeah. yeah, no, it's a cracker. It really is. And this one has always made me laugh. It's just, this is a, a brilliant street image because you really have to look to see what's going on and you just see the edge of the sheet of glass very subtly and then the penny drops. So was this just one of those moments that just happened or did you see it coming? Well, I nearly missed this. I, I saw these guys carrying the, the sheets of glass from probably a hundred meters away and, mm. and ran because I thought I'd missed it. And then, the first thing I did, and, and, and I still do this when I shoot, is if I see something like that that I might have missed, I'll look back at the truck and see how many sheets of glass they've still got on the truck to carry. And then for me, it's just a case of, you know, getting finding a position that is, um, you know, is quite subtle and not that obvious. I think there was probably three sheets left, and this might have been the last one because you can see the guy with the sunglasses, he's he's sort of worked out that I'm taking pictures. As oh, a, yes, as a I walk see. Through. But, um, yeah. yeah, so that's that's just, that, I suppose, another yeah. picture that kind of Love s- it. sums up my working <laughs> approach. And more yellow as well. It's a str- see, it, it, bold colours are definitely your thing. I think you're drawn to the strong primary colours and lots of them. Yeah, the strong colour and the, and the light are obviously things that are, you know, come through in my work and... Um, and workers, it's 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 actually mm. something that's just I don't know you know how or why it happened, but I started shooting photos of, of workers on building sites, just doing sort of weird things, and I've just continued to do it. And you know, there's no shortage of of that when you're you're out yeah. on the street. Yeah, yeah, that's no, a ripper. Now this one intrigues me. I think is this at the the race day at Mel- in Melbourne? Yeah, Melbourne Cup. So I shoot yeah. that every year, and I, I go to the races and. You know, if you if you're living in Melbourne, it's a it's a annual sort of uh, event that you must shoot. Even at, mm-hmm. around the city, there's there's always good pictures, and you know everyone's dressed up. So, yeah, this is um, a couple of years ago shot on the Q, I think. Or, yeah, the Q. Oh yes, it? yeah, yeah. I think this is a recent one. I know you, you, when you first yeah. sent it in, I remember thinking, "Wow, that's pretty. Uh, that's seriously graphic, and, and quite, yeah. it's almost hard to interpret." Yeah, well, I saw the hat first and then I kind of just walked alongside her down this um, this sort of narrow kind of passageway at the, mm. at the um, in the birdcage and just had the beautiful afternoon sun and, yeah. and then just, um, yeah, snapped off a few pictures. No, this, is this is very much a Jesse Marler image. <laughs> yeah, oh, this one. This, this one's a little bit more sort of social documentary, I suppose, less, less strong, but obviously got a strong message. So is this just something again that just popped yeah. up in front of you? Same thing, yeah. Just a, just sitting on a train in Berlin, and 
you know, I looked up and it was, it was probably one of those moments. I was glad I wasn't just staring at my phone when you're on a train. Yeah. Because, you know, all of a sudden I had this, this, this picture in front of me and then it was just a case of, of trying to sort of capture that, that, um, that contrast between the two. And I saw the woman with the pink shirt use her hand a couple mm. of times and that's what I knew that I wanted. So I just, I, yeah. I kept shooting and I think the gesture, yeah. Three or, yeah, that gesture and, you know, maybe took 50 or 60 shots of this as, as the train went, went along and yeah. got it. Yeah. Well, and I think this is the last one. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm looking at a reflection of one guy or two guys here what, or, or two people. I don't even know if they're men. I assume that. So what's going on? Well, this is a couple of, um, couple of NBN workers who oh. have been, um, obviously, installing the NBN and they're looking, looking down into the pit. Okay. Just, um, okay. or the, I think they might've had a little computer screen. So they'd done mm. the work. Mm. Yeah. And they'd, they, I think they'd closed the pit up and then they were looking at the little computer screen that they had to check that it was all working. And I saw them and I essentially, I, I shot this with the, um, with the Q2 last year. And I, I mm. shot this with the, continuous drive on because I, I knew oh, yeah. that I, I had to really nail this and get into position and just be yeah. walking past quite quickly and then just you know stop for that split second take two or three shots on burst mode and then keep walking so I was really really happy with how this picture you know, it, I was able it's to fantastic make it, you know exactly it, where I wanted them it almost looks designed because you've got a completely featureless background it also stands out I think from the rest of your work because it's super clean um, yeah. you know, a lot of your images are quite complex and you have to take a, a moment to work at what's going on. This one is just super graphic and I thought it stood out. It, it, did you, did you mention, did you say this is quite a, new, a recent image? Yeah, I took this in the middle of, I think winter 2019. So okay. last yeah. year. Yeah. yeah. So up yeah. to date. Okay. Yes. Yeah, All right. Great, well, look, great. that's, that's, that's a really interesting, um, look at your a sort of just a small selection of your images. Obviously, check out Jesse's website if you want to see more of these sorts of things. And in the future, uh, maybe we'll do some uh, more of Jesse's uh, street photography workshops where we'll be able to, uh, you'll be able to, I should say, he'll be able to teach you how to take these sorts of images. So um, I just want to say thank you to Jesse um, for taking the time to do this little recording for uh, the, the webpage. And um, we'll uh, look forward to seeing more images from him in the future. So thanks very much, Jesse. Thanks, Nick. See you soon.